What's up, everyone? It's your Friday guy, Caden. And, um, this week's topic is actually one that I had suggested, uh, due to some things that have come up in my life recently. And it's something that I've been, like, trying to figure out how to navigate this in my head. And, um, I figured the best way to put it out there would be to get the boys involved and see like how we all think about this topic. And this topic is masculinity. And masculinity is a very broad topic as there are three million things that could be talked about within this topic, within the trans community, whether that be from trans men, from trans women, from non-binary folks, from uh, gender non-conforming people, etc., etc., uh, agender people, you know. So, the reason why I suggest this is because in more recent times, I have found myself trying to not so much go by society's standards of masculinity and kind of redefine masculinity and what masculinity is in retrospect to who I am and fit that around my already formed personality and whatever that, wherever the masculinity spectrum falls to just accept that and go on with saying that, okay, I may not be 100% masculine, I may not be 100% feminine, but the sliding scale can go here or there or whatever um, at any given time. And I've been sitting and thinking and trying to come up with the best way possible to go about talking about this. And... I don't really think there is a good way, but I don't necessarily think there's a bad way either. Um, I think the topic of masculinity, whether that has to do with cisgender people or transgender people, um, whether that be male or female on both sides of those, uh, is a very hot button topic right now. Masculinity right now in the cis world, a lot of the times they feel like or so it appears from our side, from my side of things, that they feel like masculinity is being attacked because of all of these new labels we have for things and what it means, what it means that trans people exist and trans men specifically exist in a space where you are an FTM and now possess masculinity and masculine traits that the cis het community didn't necessarily see you as having prior. Uh, I'm kind of going to piggyback off of what was already said on this channel earlier this week uh, because as a trans person, as a trans man specifically, I have been extremely lucky to have lived 22 years of my life being able to express my femininity in a safe environment. Being able to explore what it means to be feminine and be feminine or to what extent I enjoyed femininity and I was very lucky in that aspect because I did live 22 years of my life as a woman or presenting as a woman um, and so I in that aspect I was able to explore femininity in a way that was not going to impact my safety. As far as masculinity goes, masculinity too has also been something that has been in my life 
from birth. I've always been a more masculine person, uh, even when I was presenting as female. And so now, since transitioning, it's trying to figure out how all of those masculine traits come out and what kind of man that makes me. The hardest part for me throughout this whole transition is trying to define what it means to be a man. (coughs) Because does being a man mean that you're this big buff, hyper masculine, hyper, you know, like, er, I'm ready to fight at any minute ready to throw down at any minute um, type of person? Or does being a man lie more in your characteristics and your morals than it does in your stature, how many people's asses you can kick, and what you bench press at the gym? I know in my journey, when I originally had come out, there was a time when... There only was the hyper-masculine, big, beefy gym dudes being visible. And so when there's nothing else that you know and there's nobody else for you to look at, you really go into admiring these people because it's all you have. And so... The first struggle that I had with masculinity was at the very beginning because I was admiring these people who weren't necessarily good men, but they looked and passed as society's standards of men. Um, Because society views men as the more space that they take up, the more aggressive they should be, the more manly you are. Uh, and that's been society's way of looking at it for quite some time, my entire lifetime. Uh, a lot of people that watch this channel's entire, entire lifetime. And so, slowly as you like divulge into these people and what they do to express their manhood and how they go about being a masculine of center person in this world and uh, I came to find out that a lot of these people that I was idolizing were actually very very toxic people and had a lot of traits that were not what I felt I needed in my life or what I wanted to be or that I should be admiring Um, there are people that have very, very, very loose morals that are hyper-masculine. But, I mean, there are also people that have very loose morals that are not, um, that are effeminate or whatever. Uh, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to touch on this side. And so uh, learning what I learned from them and how to pass, I thought that I needed to be in the gym 24-7, building all this muscle to be this beefcake. And, sure, as much as I would love to be, you know, this big, huge dude with these giant pythons for arms, um, I don't want that to define me as a man. I think that me learning that There's more to being a man than just being somebody who looks like they should be on the cover of, I don't know, like the bodybuilding, the Arnold Complex, the Arnold Contests, like magazine cover. Uh, Like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be that guy. I want to be a guy who, if there are... 40 guys around and all of the men in that group 
or talking shit about women. I want to be the one guy that stands up for women and makes it known that... <laughs> Welcome to the video. Um, I want to be the one guy that stands up and is like, you know, we don't all think like that. We don't all think that you're just pieces of meat. Um, I want to be the one guy that can express his femininity in a way that it isn't looked down upon because it's just who I am as a person. Um, and that, t that took me a long time to accept about myself that I do have feminine qualities that I don't want to lose. And that was something that at the very beginning of my transition was something that I really wanted. I didn't want to lose all my feminine, um, characteristics. I relate to a lot of my friends better having them. I can kind of relate to women just in a, an overall general sense because I've been there. I know what it's like. Um, and that was something that I didn't want to lose. But then when you come over to the masculine side and you deal with people trying to tell you that you're not man enough and if you cry or show emotion that there's something wrong with you and you're not allowed to talk about your feelings and all of those toxic, toxic traits that we teach young men and boys at, from a very, very young age that tears make you weak and it makes you feminine and being feminine is not revered. Being feminine is looked down as being less than. Um, and I'm fine with that. Sure, sometimes it's annoying when I go out and people clock me and say that because I have feminine characteristics or I do this, this, or this, that I appear to be gay. There's something wrong with being gay. I don't have a problem with that. Um, but I personally am not gay. And because I express the little feminine characteristics that I do have, it seems as though people always clock that as me being gay. Um, because I do pass as a male, and I do pass well as a male. Um, which is lucky for me. Um, that's not something a lot of people have. And so, redefining the gender stereotypes, and the gender binary, and how men are supposed to act has been something that I have been getting more and more passionate about in the recent year. Because with all the, <coughs> oh, excuse me, with all the stuff that I've gone through in the last year and a half, I've realized that there aren't a lot of resources for men. That if you're struggling as a man, your chance of wanting to commit suicide is a lot higher because you're supposed to be stoic. You're not supposed to talk about it. It's not supposed to bother you. Uh, you're not supposed to cry. Your emotions should be hidden and locked away because you're the tough one. You're the strong one. And you have to be strong for everybody else around you. Um, and I don't want to be that. I don't. I decided that after I got out of the hospital, I didn't want to be that guy. I want to open up doors to have people think, why are we thinking like this? Why do we allow women to be the only ones that could talk about anything? Why is it that one of the main concerns and the main problems I hear from a lot of my female friends who date men is that they're emotionally detached. They don't want to talk about their emotions. And yet we don't give men an avenue to be able to talk about their emotions freely. Because once you talk about your emotions freely, automatically you're a pussy. Uh, you can't handle it. You're not strong. You're weak. You're this. You're that. And that's not fair. That's not fair. We need to stop teaching our boys that it's weak to cry, and you shouldn't cry. And teach them how to handle and deal with those emotions. We need to stop telling trans men that you're not man enough because you like X, Y, and Z. Stop telling boys that the toys that they play with make them less masculine and less this. 
Masculinity is a spectrum. There are women that are hypermasculine. There are men that are hyperfeminine. There are people in the middle. And that's on both, se- both sides of the gender binary. And then you have the non-binary folks and the gender non-conforming folks and anybody who practices androgyny or what have you that float through the spectrum. I know plenty of women who are like 80-20 on the scale of 80% feminine, 20% masculine just because of things they enjoy. And that's fine. Nobody has to be 100% anything. But we need to stop making masculinity this thing that becomes so toxic to people that it is detrimental to your mental health, your safety, the safety of others. Because if we give men an outlet to talk about their feelings, to express their emotions, to tell them that you can be a good guy and have good morals and stand for good things without wanting to punch everybody in the face all the time, without having to fight everybody in the bar, without having to, you know, assert your dominance over everybody, that you can be a good guy and you're a good man and you're still expressing your masculinity in the best way that you know how without doing all those things, the sooner we do that, the better off this world will be and the better off our mental health system will be and the better off our children will be and the better off the statistics of serial killers or school shootings or whatever because we don't have an outlet for these people to talk about their feelings. And the more we get people talking, the more change is going to happen. And I think that this change is one of the biggest changes that needs to happen in, in, a, in the aspect of like males and the way that masculinity is viewed in this world. And I mean, if you are that hyper-masculine person and that works for you, that's completely fine. But just because you are that person doesn't mean that somebody else has to be. And that's also something we need to learn. That just because something works for you doesn't mean that it'll work for me, it'll work for the next person, or it'll work for the next person. And we need to let people express themselves in the way that they feel comfortable. Because all we want at the end of the day, every single person on this this earth, the only thing people want is to feel accepted and loved and cared for and secure in whatever realm that may be, whether that's having children, having a good job, having a good house, uh, cars that you want, uh, being by yourself and feeling secure in your life and where you are, getting a college degree, not getting a college degree, working at at a blue collar job, um, being a sex worker, um, whatever route that you feel security in your life that's all anybody wants in this world and everything else is trivial so stop being shitheads and just let people exist and this world will be a great place yeah that's all I got for you so see you guys next week